as soon as I start talking, you suck on the vape. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. I was about to start the show, and okay, then you whatever. hit the vape. Are you good? Yeah. What's it like being in my new room? Uh, it's. It could be more efficient. I feel like. Oh my god. I just think it could be. I've been here for two weeks. The most important part was setting up my TV and then my Captain America Civil War posters around it. <laughs> and that looks damn good. It's the most complete thing. Uh, actually, uh, the, I set the TV up because uh, when I measured it on the wall, I was standing up and I ended up putting it like way too high. Rookie mistake. Is it? Is that a common problem? It can be. When you, mount, when you mount a TV on a wall, people run into that? Absolutely. Well, the, the TV in my office... Uh, I used to have that giant desk that was up really high. Yeah. Well, now when I'm sitting in, I feel like I'm staring at uh, I don't, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Well, it's fine if you're like sitting back away, but I mean, I'm almost like right up on that TV. And well, it was that's how, how I am straining in my, my neck, pinch my nerve a little bit. No. So I had to bring it down. Um, yeah, we're in, we're in my new bedroom, folks. Folks. I, I moved two weeks ago, and this is the first time that we podcasted in here. We it's always true. we always did it at Sight and Sound Studios or Collider East, uh, but now now we're in my uh, bedroom in my not mom's for after schmo. We've only done one after schmo at uh, Sight and Sound Studios. Uh, really? Oh yeah, because the other was one was week's. the road trip or whatever. So um, I guess I owe everyone an apology, and by everyone I mean Graham Butler because I think he was the only one who missed me last night. I also owe Graham Butler an apology because I, we were doing pre schmo. And uh, I I mentioned something about the band Deftones, and I acted like he was saying that he didn't know who Deftones were, and was was and uh, or is I guess they're still a band they still exist, but I kept that shtick up, and he literally was freaking out. Is he getting pissed? At one point, he said, "For fuck's sake, I know who <laughs> Deftones is." <laughs> um, best comment by far, Rasika. If Jay talks about Collider, an alarm starts ringing, and Harloff pushes a button that immediately replaces Jay with Brian <laughs> Davids. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people have commented since we started this that they do miss the Collider talk, but we, we'll we touch on it from time to time here, but on pre we'll talk about it. Like, pre is is like our time to talk about pretty much whatever but at the same time it's like you have all this content on sk plus like that's what we're exactly. focused on so it's like honestly why why do you miss the collider talk that's what i want to ask people well i sort of again i sort of talked about it on pre mode, but this whole i ob- didn't watch obs- it. He, he started to but the whole obsession in general with drama and don't get me wrong we obviously instigated some not maybe not instigated but commented on some drama last week but People are so focused about that. Like they just want to hear people criticize or, and all this stuff. And it's like, I, I get it. That can be entertaining, but after a while, I mean, well, Jay, just, if we did, if people didn't want to do that, we would have no show. That's what people want to hear is our takes on these people, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we give. But when your show is built around stuff like that and, and that's all you want to provide, it's just like, I, I don't know, man, it's, I don't have time for it, and trust me, you people have way more time doing other things than to hear about drama at Collider and Burbank. I mean, come on. Come on, guys. It's not that big of a deal. I don't know. It's pretty stupid. Cobster loves Papa John's. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. Very well said. Another thing I'm a little annoyed by, Brad Donovan. God love him. Sweet fan. Loyal fan. Been why there you, since day why one. Get shitting on our listeners. Is Jay eligible for Schmovillian of the Week? You know who has not won Schmovillian of the Week? Me. <laughs> and they're already talking about nominating you. It's it, it just, just goes matter, with our shtick. <laughs> it's just a matter of time before you actually get nominated <laughs> and then win before I do. <laughs> I've been doing this show for over a year, and I can guarantee you will win Schmovillian of the Week before I do. For the, I don't know if we've, I think we probably have, but for those that might be new to the show, it's like this ongoing thing with Ryan and I that any time I step into a new world that he's involved in, that people prefer me over him. And, uh, I like it because what's funny about that is in fairness to our personalities, you are much more likely to be a dick than I am to people. Is that fair? It just depends on the situation. Oh, 100%. 
It depends. You can be douchey. Absolutely. It depends on how well I know you. Like, I entered your room and immediately started criticizing the layout yeah. of it. Well, it's like uh, Corey Knott, who is uh, an admin of this very page, um, the Schmoville page, he had me on his podcast. I think that'll come out next week. And he said something to me that you'll you'll really enjoy. He He complimented the fact that I was nice to everyone. And I quickly corrected him. I said, you're giving me way too much credit because it is genuinely difficult for me to stay nice to people. That's right. He doesn't know. He doesn't know you well enough. But you know what it is, though? It's like when people ask me to be on their podcast, I feel very privileged and humbled by that. Um, And I always want to say yes, because I know what it's like to ask some of these people to come on their podcast and then like get ignored. And get like no replies and that really annoys me because it's like dude it's just a podcast are you really not going to respond you can't even just tell me no so at least if if i have to i will say no but at least i'll respond and but on the flip side of that though you have had a bad experience on a podcast before yeah going on somebody else's podcast yeah and i've had bad experiences of having people on my podcast one of my favorite sayings 99 percent of all podcasts are shit it's true. Yeah. I mean, that might be a high number, but the... And that sounds like the, a dick thing to say, but it, we're just talking about sheer numbers. The the consensus the consensus overall is that most podcasts are not produced well, is, your, right. is your main point. I don't yeah. know if 99% is the accurate number. Right. But. And, and it's, it's just because of sheer numbers, anybody can do it. Just like YouTube, you know? I mean, there's so many videos on YouTube. Yeah. And just with so many numbers or so, so much content there, a lot of it's not going to be great. What, how do we get here? I don't know. We're not going anywhere. Um, coming up on the show, we're of course gonna we're gonna talk about Outlaw Nation. I have uh, something for Twitter uh, on the other side of the theme song, and of course we're gonna recap number two eighty two of the Smells No Show. Welcome to After Smo. I don't remember the uh, number that we're on now, but uh, we're going to recap Smo's No Show number 282. I'm Ryan Snelling. My name is Jay Williams. I'm on the phone right now. I'm sending some Snapchats. Every time I try to start this show, you're sending Snapchats to who? Christian? Uh, no, I don't have Christian. Does Christian have Snapchat? Yeah. I don't trust he has Snapchat. No, he actually does. I don't know that he uses it, but he 100% does because it was a bit on the show. Maybe that could be your history lesson sometime. The fact that he, he couldn't figure out Snapchat and I gave him like a little tutorial on this podcast. And uh, after my tutorial, it never saw the light of day again. In fact, he never added me as a friend. Of course he didn't. Um, neither did Mark Ellis. Of course he didn't. People over the age of 35 probably don't use Snapchat at all. I guarantee Ellis does. He just, that's the one thing that he probably doesn't want the fans to know about. Like well, I guarantee- that's kind of how I am. I, my Snapchat. So now every social media service has like a Snapchat copycat. And my Instagram is like a bunch of people I know and I'm acquaintances with. My Snapchat is like just my really close friends that I can act a fool on, but I would never act a fool on my Instagram. Why? I'd probably just, get more followers. I don't want to because that's not how I want to present myself. My Instagram oh, is Lord. very, very boring. I mean, it, it's super, super boring, but I like it. I like how I, it is. I've been told by one person that I have a very browsable Instagram. I, th- I thought that was quite the co- compliment. Who, who told you this? I'm not telling you. Because I won't think it has any validity at all. Yeah. Was it your mom? No. <laughs> okay. My mom doesn't know what Instagram is. Um, but anyway, I guarantee that's the one thing that Ellis tries to keep from people. This is his, his Instagram but, or Snapchat, excuse me. But that doesn't mean he can't add me. Jesus Christ, we're best friends. Mark followed me on Instagram and so did RB3. Yeah. I'm just saying. It's just, no, it, it made, yeah. made me happy. It's just a thing, right? We had a back and forth with Mark and John Roca on Twitter last Sunday. You know, I, I like to point out the fact that Josh McCuga has yet to follow me back on Twitter, but Christian. Probably won't happen now. He probably officially hates you good call him a dick he knows i'm right yeah i don't know I don't well, know we'll we'll talk about it yeah um but after all this time christian's never followed me back on instagram quit it's not why the, are you making that face because it's not a big deal it's not a big deal but it would make it would make sense or it doesn't make sense that he doesn't 
maybe he doesn't want a bunch of fans. Maybe he doesn't want to follow a bunch of fans. <laughs> That's all we are to him, isn't it? Uh, uh, let's let's talk about uh, Outlaw Nation for a second. Okay. We're, we're going to be a week behind. This comes out on a Friday, of course. So uh, the most recent Outlaw Nation is actually a second episode that's got Matt Nost on it. Neither of us have heard that yet. But we haven't gotten a word out, or at least I haven't gotten a word out, on the official first episode of the show. I listened to it this morning, Jay. It was like 5 a.m. Yeah, what did you think? Did you like that? Yeah, it was pretty much exactly what I thought it was going to be. Uh, which got me really excited because, you know, not only do I love the schmoes, but I love podcasting and I like listening to podcasts about other things other than movies. And now that I have someone that can talk about sports and politics as well, I can, I can unsubscribe from some other podcasts cause I got them on it. Why are you making that face? Roka's going to be your replacement for Dan Levitar. No, Libertard? <laughs> that's not what I'm saying at all. I listen to more podcasts than Dan sense. Libertard. I mean, just for the sheer quality it's to a, overtake it. It's this SK Plus, the Shmo Plus. It's just uh, I've been broadening listening, its horizons. I've you been know? listening to SK Plus podcasts a lot. Uh, the Wanger Show, I enjoy The Wanger Show. Wish it was a little bit more uh, consistent with when they put their episodes out. No episode this week. Just kind of ragging on you guys a little bit. Beardo is absolutely crushing it. Uh, and I, yeah, I listened to, to outlaw nation as well. I listened to the first episode. It was funny. It was strange, but he sort of did like a, a media tour, like his version of a media tour. He was on knapsack files Yeah, and he was also on the Schmodown rundown. He didn't come on this podcast, but that's okay. He's been on <laughs> sight and sound before, uh, in the past. And it, it was nice. The downside to that is he pretty much told the exact same story about his past and his. Kind oh, of so he did all that up. on the Napsock files yeah, already. And, and so I'd kind of heard that already. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I'm I'm go- I'm excited to see where the show goes from here. Uh, but his appearance, or his not his his appearance, his presence on SK Plus. I said this to him on on Schmoville. Uh, I, I told him great job and that. The rising tide lifts all boats because everybody's everybody's plays not not everybody but at least ours rundown and outlaw nation they all got a little boost they all got a little bit a, a little bit of a lift now is that directly related to John Roca well two of them are because one was his podcast one was one with him on it as a guest but ours got a nice little boost too I like that and sight and sound didn't <laughs> well <laughs> sight and sound was a little bit buried in that whole <laughs> that whole mix but uh we're the only, yeah we're the only people that have two podcasts so suck it that's true but uh what i will say is that uh, i thought he did a very good job i'm not great at doing solo podcasts i don't have a lot of confidence in myself when i do that so i thought he killed it um well i mean part of it was with emma fife and i thought she was great on it as well uh I was very interested in pretty much everything he had to talk about. Granted, I've kind of that Adam Jones uh, bit has sort of been played to death with me because I do listen to Levitard, but that's obviously not his fault. And it's obviously something that I want. I want John Roca to speak on some of those issues, and that's exactly why I wanted to tune in to something like the Outlaw Nation. Uh, I can't wait to listen to his episode with Nost. Uh, not just because, I mean, I'm riding high based on the first episode, but the fact that Nost is going to be on it too. Um, very, very happy, very intrigued. I uh, cannot wait to hear more from Outlaw Nation. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't been able to really get into the habit of listening to Wangers. Like, I check it out every now and then. Uh, I check out Beardo every now and then. But uh, I feel like Outlaw Nation is going to be that that one show that I stick with every week. So, well, one of my one of my life goals in general is to have a successful podcast about nothing. That's that's why I love the fighter and the kid so much. Uh, it's it's legitimately yeah, a podcast that, about nothing, and the Wangers is kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. I would love I would love to have a podcast where people just come to hear me talk about whatever and be silly. And that's well, kind of what sight and sound is for the most part, but we we do have a some topics we've got to. You know, hit we on. always got our hot takes, Jay. That's the uh, after party that we do in sight and sound. That's essentially a podcast about. It could be about anything, but it's a podcast about nothing. People seem to enjoy those. Since we have to talk about Christian, uh, 
we have a requirement. We have to, he may, it's a mandate that he requires us to speak about him every show, even though he's still not on the live show. I feel betrayed by him. Why do you feel betrayed by him? I feel betrayed, you know, because he doesn't give you credit for the t-shirt designs. No, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It, look, the Schmodown is a thriving and a flourishing, uh, (laughs) prime piece of content it is the it, it does flourish it is 100 percent one of not the most successful piece of content on collider and that is his brainchild his brain baby so to speak he has two of the three he runs two of the three most successful absolutely and and that's great and it's it's evolving and it's developing and and schmoes schmoes no live show has been something that he built up and it's sort of running You know, it's running on its own, so to speak. And I just, you know, he did this. He's been doing these Facebook Live things and the Schmodown group and professing how much he (laughs) loves that group and this and that. And and that's great. I get it. You're proud of your kid when he goes off to school. But, you know, I just feel feeling a little bit neglected. See, I I get it. I I think you're you kind of feel like a stepchild, maybe, because you didn't get to come in. Not a stepchild. Not a what, stepchild. What is it then? Because it's it's like it's, you came onto this like, show. It's like daddy got remarried and he's got another family now, <laughs> right? And he's wanting to hang out with those kids, or like, more. or like you never got to know him essentially because when you came into the show, he was yeah. uh, he was already gone. So you're still waiting for your moment, like Christian. <laughs> and, and, and and now and now daddy is like he's got these other kids and they're great at baseball. And I don't play baseball. And you don't play baseball. But what I'm going to yeah. do is I'm going to study baseball and I'm going to research it as much as I possibly can. And I'm going to start playing baseball so that I can start throwing no hitters and that he can re fall in love with me again. And so maybe he'll forget. Well, not again. And he maybe he'll, maybe he'll forget about those other kids because I'm the better baseball player. <laughs> Man, you're stretching this out. Anyways, I'm sorry. I kind of kind of went dark for a second. What I will say, we didn't actually touch on this last week. I wanted to talk about the collider behind the scenes of the Schmodown. And that show, that for one, it was great. It was very interesting. Um, I'm very glad that Perry put that together. Um, and then that random one guy that was holding a camera and no one knows who that is. Um, Wait, that didn't have anything to do with the Schmodown. That was the one where they were talking about food. Which we okay, knew got whatever, all the hits because that's. Well, I'm it, sure that guy was there. Regardless, if you, if you put out content about food, people will comment about it. That's true. The specifically the the schmo down behind the scenes, Christian seeing Christian in that element, he looks like a genius. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, I I was so inspired by that video. Oh, you didn't you didn't seeing, listen to you didn't listen to Beardo with uh, with Perry. No. Did you know that Perry now shares the office with Mark and Christian? No, I did not. So she shares the office with Mark and Christian. He was trying to get some dirt on them, like what their day to day is like. Yeah. And well, they she, hate each other. She, I guarantee she it. said that she said that when Christian's not in a meeting or not doing something on air, all he does in his free time is watch old Schmodown matches. <laughs> That's all he does, and that and that he's constantly like bringing up Schmodown related stuff. <laughs> And what the hell is the matter with him? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like when I started thinking about maybe doing a show that had to do with movies. I re I I watched all of the MCU movies for the first time. Maybe <laughs> it just kind of got no. I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. Oh, that's so funny to me. I, I mean, it makes him. sense. It's it, he's seeing the success. He's seeing the numbers. Oh, so he's just invested in it. I know, and it's it's crazy. And I give him all the credit in the world. I mean. You think the schmo down is one way, and you're like, okay, Christian's the chairman. He puts the drama together. Like you can la- label it that easy, I guess, yeah. and you might make that mistake. But to see him actually like calling uh, the shots where they're shooting the green screen footage, like the promotional stuff, and the fact that Christian is like dictating what they say and asking them questions, and the fact that he is involved with every bit of the process, like that's the stuff that you don't consider. Yeah. He's developing and, the storylines. Yeah. yeah. And I just thought that it was just really, really inspiring. And I loved, loved watching that. So, uh, thank you, uh, 
to everyone involved with that. While we're that was on, great. While we're on this subject for a second, I, I touched on it on Prishmo, but one thing that I would like to see, just because it, it, it exists and it would make sense, I, I know we get some Schmodown things that take place on the live show, 100%, but I would love for the live show to at least maybe have a 30 minute segment because it's so popular on collider. What you doing over there? I accidentally played a video. On so, my phone. uh, I would love for them to have maybe a 30 minute segment every now and then just dedicated 30 to 30 minutes to just listen to me, just dedicated to the schmo down, uh, or so that you can help develop storylines over there. Just like in pro wrestling, you, in order to get the full storyline, you, you have to watch Monday Night Raw. You have to watch SmackDown. You have to watch the pay-per-views to get the bigger picture. I mean, you can only go so far back as to look at the decision episode of the Schmoes No Show. I mean, that was a, that was a really, really memorable episode. It was amazing. And, you know, I think to help grow and help boost and maybe piggyback on the growing, growing success of the Schmodown, to, you know, maybe take the involvement of the live show and the Schmodown to another level, considering there's a reason it's called Schmodown. It came from, it's a Schmo's no branded product. Mm -hmm. So I think if they could help one another out in that way, and like I said, they do it, but maybe if there's another level to it, that's what I would like to see. So I don't agree that it should take place on the live show because the live show is already packed and I don't, I don't want to wait for the schmo down segment of the live show every is week. Is it packed though? Is it packed? Yes. Is it? If you add a Brett to the Future already takes thirty minutes itself. Okay. You add another thirty minutes, that's half of oh, the you, show. Oh, you mean for the game that they came up with this week in a day? Like that they literally developed that game. I don't I don't wanna I don't want the end of every live show to be the schmo down segment. No, I would much prefer I don't they want improvise that, a game. I don't want than, that either. Thirty thirty minutes maybe a month, 30 minutes a month, maybe they d- dedicate so, something to it. So my idea is to just, if it helps the show grow, I would rather than just put together a quick video and have a separate video entirely. Sort of like how they like the inserts. And I can't remember the wrestling term and I don't give a shit, whatever uh, those inserts were in the middle of the uh, spectacular where it's just like someone walking into the, Finstock walking into the writer's room and seeing someone from the lines then talking to someone from the horsemen and they've been like, what? What's this about? And then it would just be like a little, yeah. p- not only promotional, but it's like part of the storyline. But In, anyth- I want it to be produced. I don't want it to be a segment on the live show. Anything that would bring over some Schmodown fans that have never watched the live show before to expose them to that, you know, it, I, I just think it would help. I, I think it would help grow uh the live show as well okay that's good uh do you want to talk about the live show now i think i do do you want to compare notes oh you know what i got something okay go ahead i got something on twitter it's about christian harloff and his little verification issue okay twitter should be ashamed of itself okay do you want to know why christian harloff is having the worst time getting verified on that stupid site you want to know what movie i watched this week jay the social network the social network you know what movie isn't about twitter why are you screaming you're getting echoey the social network that's right that's right, that's right. twitter who the hell do they think they are not verifying our daddy the Smodown chairman christian harloff i don't really feel too bad for him you don't feel bad for him because i do i mean when you walk into that collider studio office and walk past wendy lee zaney's office knowing that she has 10 times less the followers than you do and is still verified on twitter i don't think so and then you have to keep walking and find dennis zhang who is behind Probably one of my favorite Collider personalities. Dennis Zhang. I mean, he is. I get happy every time he's on screen. Don't you? He's funny. 
when you look behind that TriCaster and see that man producing the show that you host, that you're the on-screen presence for, you're the face of Jedi Council and the Schmodown. Yet, that man is verified on Twitter? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, look. All from a company who just ripped the fluff right, take it easy. from Facebook. Take it easy. It just made the skeleton version of what Facebook is. I mean, my it's God. It's just a thing. No, it's, it's just not a blue, just a it's thing. It's just a blue check no, mark thing. No, it's disrespectful. And I, and I won't stand for it. So here's what I want. This is a call to arms from Schmoville. Okay? If you're listening to this, here's what I want you to do right now. I need you to tag verified. It's at verified. That's the Twitter verification account. Let them know that they should be ashamed of themselves for not verifying Christian Harloff. Now, to get verified, Christian has to send in some ID and so he has to go through a process and he's done it a couple of times from what I understand, but you can still harass them and they can know the mistake that they've made. And then they can reach out to Christian. They can reach out to Christian this time. Christian doesn't have to do it again. They can reach they don't out. don't have to do anything. That's right. Well, that doesn't apply here, but they can reach out to Christian and then verify him. So I need everyone who's listening to this, not only tweet at verified, but tell your friends. Make this a movement. Let's get the verification street team going. And let's make this happen. Because Twitter, you're blowing it. Did did Twitter okay, start that's You've a got movie this trivia game on YouTube? No, I don't think so. Well, Twitter is... Twitter is- not a person, it's a Twitter site, so they don't just, have that capability. Twitter is just a, a lesser version of Facebook. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's the diet Facebook. I like how you're saying is. this, but this is the place where you're the most popular, so <laughs> it's gotten you pretty far. As an experiment, I'm going to submit myself and see if I can get verified uh, before Christian Harloff. I'd, I'd love for that to happen. The guy who hosts the after show gets verified before the guy who uh, left um, the live show to go to Paramount for a screening uh, with John Campia. Wouldn't it be funny if maybe he just wasn't filling out the forms right? <laughs> he was just like forgetting to check well, then a they box. They should be ashamed of themselves for not correcting him All right. and helping I, him out I've and had assisting him. For some, reason, for some reason, this rant is just annoying me and I don't know why. I have no idea why. Perhaps because it's gone on for too long. So Smells No Show number 282. Dream Direct out of something like that. It's hosted by Mark Ellis, Mark Riley at the table, Ken Knapsack, Emma Fife, and our boy Brett Sheridan is on the couch. What a crew. Great crew. Love, um, love the crew. Before we get in into love the, with the crew. Yes. Before we get into the main discussion, we like to do this thing. Jay is going to read off his notes, uh, sort of preface what we're going to be talking about here today. Uh, Joe, or yeah, Joe. Jay, this is your stream of consciousness throughout the live show. What do you got for us? That's right. This is the most notes I've ever taken for any live well, show. Well, this is period. supposed to be rapid fire. I'm just saying, it's the most I've ever taken. All right, here we go. All pink for Ken. Laugh my ass off. What's wrong with Cobster? He looks rough. Oh, okay, sleep paralysis. What the hell is wrong with Cobster? Slipknot. I'm fascinated by this conversation. How to hip hop? What? Anytime schmoes talk about music, I sink into a deep, dark hole of fear. Good to see the news back. What Robert Meyer Burnett was going to be there? Did the camera scare him away? Brett's Beardo call wait, Brett's Beardo call back to Emma during Rebel Come. Shh, be quiet. Validation on Brett feeling slighted. It's the first time this show, meaning after Schmo or Schmoville, has ever affected anything on the Schmo's No Show. Take it to the bank. It's never happened ever, ever before. Did the show go off the rails? I would have loved to see Copster's face during the strip club discussion. Is Chris Hartwell the smartest guy to ever be on a collider-based program? Big fan of that peacoat jacket-looking thing Hartwell is wearing. Mark was fiery this week. I absolutely love this week's main segment. Ken has barely spoken. 
oh shit, Jeremy is on. Now's our chance to talk about his batshit crazy faces. The ace said, wait, the way ace says Guillermo del Toro. Amazing. <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of my notes. <laughs> We've been killing it with these tremendously long segments on the show. <laughs> Let me just say, and I texted you this. I was 30 minutes into this episode and it was fire. This episode was great. I, I loved, I loved this episode. A very uh, hodgepodge, mishmash, potpourri, if you will, of potpourri. personalities on this thing. You mean the same group of people that's on every week? No, just the perfect concoction. Jay Washington? Yeah, the perfect concoction, the perfect mixture. You had Jeremy Johns popping up here and there. You had Sad Ken. You had... Uh, you had a fiery Brett and a fiery Mark. I think Jeremy was there to make up for his time when he was late earlier because he had a migraine. RB3. RB3 was having a bad day, but having it come back. Did you see that on Twitter? No. Was he having a bad RB3 day? RB3 said that, uh, that that day was one of the worst days he's ever had in his life, but then it was a picture of him smiling, and he said, but after this, it made it all better or something like that. Oh, that's interesting. Like yeah. the Schmoes No Show made it better? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. What a nice family they have over there in the studio with what us. What a nice family we have, except for Christian, who's off playing with his other kids. <laughs> the baseball team. The baseball He's kids. coaching. Coach Harloff. More like T-ball. The sleep paralysis thing, does that freak you out? Yeah, and it's weird. I have this thing where I don't have anything wrong with me. So anytime people talk about things that they have issues with, I'm just like, what is that? I'm, I'm like, get up. You know, like I, I sometimes I'll wake up and I, I just like feel like, like laying there. Like I can't really move. But then I think about it and I'm like, I can just get up and I just get up. There are very few things that haven't happened to me in, in that manner of speaking. But the one thing I just don't know about or understand are Charlie horses. Well, I don't well, that have anything to do with sleep paralysis, but I get it. Okay. But you know, just like a bodily thing. Yeah. What's going on there? It's lactic acid. You're dehydrated. Yeah. Well, your muscles are tense. You just up. can't move? No, a Charlie horse? Your your muscles legitimately seize up and it, it hurts like a bitch. I mean, it's essentially imagine like lifting a weight and then your muscle getting stuck in that position, like, but contracting. So and then it, you it can't hurts. release? No, it hurts. I mean, you can, but it hurts so bad. That's weird. You so, must be really well hydrated if you've never had one. I'm not really that Did I say well. lactic acid? I don't think it has anything to do with lactic acid. It might. So the one thing I want to talk about is Blade Runner. Okay. Because on We're every... supposed to talk about movies. I don't, okay. I'm not going to talk about the actual movie. I'm going to talk about the opi opinions presented. Blade Runner, everybody acts like it's a huge deal. Like it's an incredible movie. You know this. I watched it this past year. Not really impressed by it. Um... Other than the visuals. So it was really a breath of fresh air. Sounds like most other Ridley Scott movies. Hot take. I just felt validated because more, I realized that most of those people at the table didn't care about Blade Runner. They did, they either hadn't cared enough to see it or they were just underwhelmed by it. And that makes me feel a whole lot better. I was very surprised to hear that this group of movie fans didn't hold that to high regard. I agree. I agree so much that I'd love to carry this conversation over to Sight and Sound this week. Okay. Well, we'll just leave it there then. This this thing with the cum. Great. Was, great. Th this was this was vintage Schmozno. This was Toad Hop Days Schmozno. Like yeah. when when Christian opens a show with "What the fuck's going on, you fuckers?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean it's that level, it, and I love it. I I'm not gonna go into the thing, but I wish he was there for that reason. Agreed. Um, I feel like that's something. I feel like he wouldn't have brought it up though, because he's more of a company man now. He's calmed down. I don't think Christian ever would have brought it up the way that Mark did y uh, yesterday. It's an interesting take. Yeah, well, that's all I say about it. But great. So great, in fact, I don't remember the last time I was uncomfortable by something that was happening. Like, I'm a pretty vulgar guy. I have a good tolerance for that kind of language and vulgarity. It doesn't faze me, but I don't know. It was just so glaringly different 
than most of what happens on the Schmoes No Show that it just caught me by surprise, but I loved it because it was so weird and so out there. I remember a segment. Uh, I was watching some old videos, and I remember a segment that they did. It must have been like a truth or dare thing. And Christian specifically gave a dare to what's a girl that hosts movie talk as well as Josh with Josh. Who's a regular who hosts movie talk Who is like with a, Josh, a regular with Josh McCougar on, I'm sorry, on TV talk. Sinead. Sinead DeFreeze. DeFreeze or DeFree? DeFreeze. DeFreeze. Yes. Anyways, uh, where she had to do her best fake orgasm. Oh yeah. Great moment. Yeah. yeah. So, Sinead I remember, was never asked to I remember, come on again. I remember having to skip past that because I I couldn't take it. Oh, everyone freaked. I couldn't do it. Makuga freaked out. It was too awkward he for me. He secretly loved it, even though he was engaged. Too awkward to me. Too awkward? Yeah. So you didn't even watch it? I mean, I watched it, but I had to you move, just didn't, move okay. past it very quickly. Interesting. Did you... We're going to talk about... Actually, let's do it now. I thought... It, I, I, real quick, I did think that was great just because... It had to do with Emma, and Emma is so professional when she's on the air, and yeah. to sort of be like, "You're great at what you do, but we're gonna throw come at you," <laughs> just like or whatever, you know. What I'm saying. Man, now I got uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, we're gonna jump around. There are two, like, what did they just say? Moments. For those that don't know, Ryan's mom just walked in with a coffee. It's great. Coffee. Iced coffee. Please don't edit this out. It's it's funny. Now he's uh, now he's swirling it around to get the milky goodness going on. You know what? McDonald's and Starbucks should be ashamed of themselves. Stop! Don't go here again. They make inferior iced I coffee. This. I got a, I got my iced coffee from Chick Fil A because Starbucks can't make an iced coffee. Isn't that from Dunkin' Donuts? Where is there a Dunkin' Donuts? I have no right idea. Here? This is from the Chick Fil A. Anyway, let's they don't talk like about gay people. Let's talk about what? They don't like gay people. Oh yeah, I know, but they make delicious chicken. They so do. <laughs> so <laughs> I have nothing to add. I let's agree. talk about weird things that were said tonight. So did you hear how Brett said Budapest? Budapest. Yeah. Why did why did he say Budapest? I don't know. It could be right. I have no idea. No, I, there's no way that's right. You don't know. You don't live there. It's wow. like people getting on me or us or anybody for saying Dennis Villanueva. That's clearly how you say it. Dennis <laughs> Villanueva. The other weird thing that was said, and you mentioned it in your notes, and it's this, I cracked up. It might have been the hardest I laughed in the entire show. I'm not going to lie. Over the cum thing. The hardest I laughed was arguably when Ace said Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo del Toro. Because we just talked about that on Sight and Sound, how it always throws us off <laughs> when, like, specifically in this example, it was about... Was a, it Sight and Sound or was it Leftovers? Because we were talking about... Or it was Leftovers. Mel still, Melbourne. Yeah. Melbourne. That's right. We're on the Leftovers uh, podcast. We were talking about how it throws us off when a Latin American person like Ace, like John Roca, who are clearly, they were raised Americana. They speak like clear English. But when th they throw in that one Latin, well, not Latin word, Spanish word, they instantly change how they say it. And this one, as if I, as if someone's policing it, that if they <laughs> if they do it wrong, that they'll right. they be take a, an outcast from their community. <laughs> it's just it just throws us off, and we just think it's funny. I mean, we understand it; it just throws us off. Yeah, I took a great trip to Barcelona. Right, it's like, <laughs> it's like what? I just think it's funny, but uh, I totally get it. Just but, say it how we say it. So Jay, it's that's fine. too far. No, it's not. If That's too far. I'm, I'm saying if you're an American, if you're a white person from like New Jersey and you decide one day because you visited Barcelona that you're going to call it Barcelona, <laughs> then stop. Just just say it. Just say it how you sound in your New Jersey accent. It's fine. Okay. Oh, so you want people to feel like they can say how they want to say it or Absolutely. where they grew up. Okay. Dennis Villanueva. So, well, you're just assuming that Ace has taken the extra step. And working well, at he's saying a, it that he's way. He's Hispanic. 
That's fine. I, I was gonna say I doubt I I believe that that's what is triggered. Now if is I started doing that, then people need to look at me weird because like <laughs> if I was just like, I love Hellboy director Guillermo del Toro. Like the, what <laughs> did you just say? Same thing goes with people that like anime. Actually, it's Akira. It's, no, it's not. It's not Akira. It's like that might be how other people and other cultures say that word. But that's not how you should say that word because you don't say things like that. I so can't wait. Stop. I can't wait for Ace to hear this and to get his take in the comments. I mean, he'll probably he's, agree he's, with me. I, I think he's going to destroy you, actually, and I hope I th- that's the case. No, him and Emma went head to head about uh, that one thing about the killing book or whatever it's called. What's that one called? Death, 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 no. death Journal. Yeah. So, anyway, the reason why it was so funny is because we just had that conversation. And I know Ace does that. And again, I get it. I mean, I just think it's funny. For like, the record, 99% of what I just said was shtick. But yeah, but but, but I don't think get, of who your audience is. I know, They're going to I take know they it. Will. But for the record, I do want it to show that people can say whatever they want, however they want. And nobody should be like, well, actually, it's actually it's shut the hell up. It's I fine. thought you were going to. Weren't you introducing a new segment this week? The mispronunciation of the week? And now it's time for... No, I'm not. I'm not gonna do anyway, it. so can I finally finish this point? Yes, I'm sorry. Jesus. Talk about long segments today. <laughs> anyway, the point was, it was funny because we just got done talking about it. It threw me off just because just this particular time, it threw me off so hard. <laughs> I wasn't even sure what he said. Right. I was like, who did he just say? <laughs> it took me a second to be like, oh, he just did that thing. And then it was the fact that everyone else gave the context that it was Garibald del Toro that I was like, I guess that's what they said. <laughs> like, it was maybe like it's extra a, hard. Maybe it's a Kentucky thing, but like, it, it might be. Everybody was just like, oh yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you and I would have been like, what? Well, think about it. I mean, three fourths of that wingers to, or the the you know the table back there is Latino, Latino. Absolutely. So um, so anyway, I guess they probably in California have a better ear for it, but. Anyway, I just thought it was a funny coincidence. Um, I got so sidetracked with my notes. Uh, let's talk about... Oh, for one, we were featured. I, I was uh, very thankful to that. It was the first time that... Well, it wasn't the first time that we were featured, but it was the first time we sort of drove the discussion. Uh, let's get into the, the sort of Brett and Makuga thing. It's the first time ever that's happened. Yeah. So, there's there's so much that we could start with with this. There's a lot of angles we can go at. I, I guess my first question is... I'm curious about why we weren't more involved. Like they played the clip and the break, but they never said anything like you and I played this up. They never said that we were instigating everything. In fact, they played it like it was something that actually needed to be addressed. Like they came up with it. Well, not, no, not even (laughs) that. Like what I'm getting at is, I think we were 100% actually onto something, whereas some people in our comments section were saying, well, I don't really think, I think you read into something that I didn't see, blah, 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 and then people use it as a platform to, you know, make fun of bread or whatever. I, what I think happened is I think it, I think it's actually a thing, and I think they addressed it on the show because it was a thing and it couldn't go unnoticed. But I don't think there was actually any resolution from the bit. I, I made the comment off or air. Or non bit, excuse me. I made the comment off air that I don't think that they actually have a beef. A beef would mean that they had some pre existing thing that one person wronged another and they're holding this constant grudge. I think in that specific moment, and there probably there might have been other moments where Josh McCuga did something that annoyed Brett in that specific moment. And it annoyed them to where they kind of went head to head with one another. Now, I'm not going to name names, but a very high ranking individual, Dennis asked, Zang? No, asked about where in the show this took place. And we had to tell this person where in the show this took place. I have a feeling that this individual brought this to the show and said, let's talk about this. Let's bring this up. It would be an interesting segment. He or she got got, uh, got Josh McCuga to call in. It was in during, Grace Hancock. <laughs> Josh got got Josh McCuga to call in during Game Seven of this whatever sport, it is sport match. 
in uh, <laughs> sports contest. And um, yeah, I, I, I just I think this was something that could have easily just been glossed over any other episode. But because I think we brought it up and it was such a big talking point on our show. And uh, I don't know, just because certain high ranking individuals like to drive uh, controversy then. Yeah. Wasn't subtle in the least. But what I will say, I still think it's true. Yeah. Like, I think it actually is a thing. I'm not saying that, like, Brett pissed in Makuga's Cheerios and then I have this vendetta. Like, like you're probably right. It's probably just their personalities clash or Makuga is annoyed. But I don't think... What can Brett do, honestly, to anybody, to hurt anybody? I mean... He's great at comebacks. He is great at comebacks. He even took a shot today where he said... Uh, Yes, I. What did he say? He was triggered by a man who can be afraid of films. I thought that line yeah. was hysterical. He said that, and and I think he because that's another thing too. Jay Washington started to have a go at him, and I was like, not again. And he actually played it. <laughs> he actually played it okay, but yeah. the, he even had like a, a few quick stingers uh, to him as well. You know how close this episode was to actually being like. I almost could have ranted about Mark Ellis and Jay Washington this week because well, I thought it was going to happen again. I actually do have to pick a bone with Mark on this whole thing. Mark, and I feel I get what he was trying to do. He was trying to take as much of the blame as anybody else because he was like, oh, we, I was giving you a hard time. Mark really wasn't giving him a hard time. With yeah, it. he sat back. and Yeah, he, he didn't really take issue with it. So uh, I appreciate him for trying to be like, you know, Mr. Not necessarily peacemaker, but I don't know, trying to look out for everybody. But you didn't have to do that, Mark. It's all good. So um, Jay and I have this tradition where we actually go shopping for our Halloween costumes months in advance because we we hate the holiday rush. Uh, so we're actually going this weekend um, to pick out our Josh Makuga Halloween costumes. What do you What are you gonna pick out to wear this year? If you're if you're gonna be Josh McCuga. Well what are you going with? Probably I'm probably gonna go to Hollister and buy a polo to put my collar up. Um, are you gonna do wear two polos with the pop collar? Probably. That or a long sleeve t shirt. I know that uh we had a conversation in a group text one time about if long sleeve t shirts were douchey or not. And I don't know. And I don't know, just gonna figure out the most the most frat boy attire that I could have. So what I'm thinking is I'll 100% have some kind of Pittsburgh top, whether it be a t-shirt or a jersey. Um, I'm going to wear thong sandals with jeans with holes in the knee. And I'm going to buy a werewolf mask, but cut the hair off of it and tape it with double-sided tape to the entire length of my arms. There you go. I like that. And uh, and then maybe buy a Finstock mask, but cut off the hat of it. Uh, that way I can have a really f- wooly, wooly beard. Buy a case of Magic Hat. Um, yes. So while we're on this topic, I do want to make one statement here. So what I'm about to say is painting with a broad brush, but, uh, but just for the sake of conversation. Everybody, for the most, not maybe not everybody, most people on the, sh- the live show all had the same commentary about sports, about how, what, you're not a fan of sports? How are you not a fan of sports? That's crazy. Blah, 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 blah. Do they not realize that one of the characteristics of nerd culture in general, and I, trust me, I know that there are people who like comic books and Star Wars and movies and all this stuff that enjoy sports but one of the stereotypes is that nerd culture is typically not a fan of jock slash sports culture so right do, do they not realize that that when they're when they are projecting that out in out towards brett that there's they could potentially be speaking to a large section of their audience i, I i'm curious because don't get me wrong we talked about it we both like sports of course. And like I said, I'm sure there are people out there watching this that do like sports, but I'm sure there's a huge swatch of individuals that do not care for sports either. Right. I, I would assume that the, well, it's hard to say because the mass majority of their fan base is male. So right. maybe, maybe right. it's hard to, maybe it would be wrong to say that most of their fans don't like sports because 
Well, okay. Now, people might get mad at me because now I'm saying that most of the time men like sports. And okay, that's not the let, case. Let, let's just say the stereotype I'll, in general. I'll just take away everything that I've just said. Well, well yes. What what you're suggesting is very possible that they're kind of alienating uh, the majority of their fan base. But what I think is interesting, though, is I, I don't think that any of these people that we're talking about ever really grew up to like they all have to have some type of um, external personality. What's the word I want? What not internal, but external personality persona no what's the word other than external like when you're outward supplementary I no don't know. god damn it what's it called when you are when you hold yourself in your your introvert pers- yes thank you all of these people have to somewhat be extroverted personalities to be on camera to be comfortable now i'm not saying that they didn't grow up with their challenges i know you're saying all extroverted people like sports no, I'm. <laughs> what I'm saying is people that are extroverted are typically more social and more popular, and they probably tend to enjoy more outgoing things like that. So I guess what I'm saying is... It, it's, it's a good point. What, what you're saying is a good point, because actually Roca talked about it right. with, with his relationship with Christian, that... Christian was a part, Ro, Roca was in a fraternity, he went to Florida State, and one of the things that him and Christian connected on was the fact that they both had this underlying love of movies and whatnot. And I'm sure a lot of these people, like Mark is a stand-up comedian who has this other job, which is could be his main job, I don't know, but has this other job in this movie space. You, you, does that make sense what I'm saying? Like, Right. I'm a graphic designer, but I have this other underlying pop culture fascination that makes me do a podcast about it. I just feel like and again, generalizing their audience could potentially be the opposite of that, where the pop culture, the, the nerd, the nerddom, the geekdom is, is their number one. I don't know. Okay. I think what I want to, what I want to say here is that all of them have a more broad personality. Yes. I think that's what gets them to that General point. Personality, I think yeah. that might be what I want to say is that they, they all have to have broad personalities to sort of be in the position that they're in. You could say the same thing about, uh, athletes and then sports spectators like yeah for sure you could make the argument that people who you know are at home watching the sports couldn't amount to what certain athletes could be because that's not same thing goes here maybe someone who's a fan of schmoes is the introvert they kind of enjoy watching things on tv blah 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 but they're not someone who is necessarily an outward personality am i making any sense at all no, for sure. I, I mean, again, I think we are speaking in extremely, extremely general terms. So let's just throw that out there. We know that there is a, a very large audience here and we know that everybody is different. And they have their own separate personalities. But 100 percent. I mean, it is atypical. It is. Well, it's atypical. It, it's it's a non-traditional thing to be so passionate about a show on YouTube. I feel like I'm talking about other people making generalizations. I can actually apply everything we've just said to myself. Oh, hundred percent. All of this stuff, this YouTube channel, Schmoes, Collider, what we're doing right now, all of this is an alternative sort of lifestyle. It's like, I almost have zero time to watch anything else other than, uh, prestige dramas and movies. It's because, like, if I, I, I can't watch Sports Center, I, I don't always have the time to attend ball games and stuff. I'm not as into sports because I, have, I dedicate so much time by choice around this movie culture and blah, blah, blah. So I can say the same thing about myself. Yeah, I guess. and their, their day job is in this space. So they probably do have other passions outside of the things that their day job is in. For so many other people, this stuff is their hobby. I don't know. I, you know what? I don't think we made any sense in that either. entire conversation. I don't either. What's up with these awful long segments that we're running today? Know. Let's talk Jay Washington. What do you think? <laughs> um, let's try to okay. short, let's try to make J- our segments brief from now. <laughs> Jay Washington is not my favorite Schmodown competitor, um, but him on the Schmodown, I love. Like I love the fact that he was a hype person for Miss Movies. I think that is his spot. I think he's fantastic. Uh, in that regard, 
he sort of took over the show like when they were trying to introduce this uh this beef brett and makuga beef segment uh that was his first introduction to the show and he came in very very hot <laughs> i was like no he's talking about having an orgy in gym class or some bullshit yeah. like that i love I, I think his, <laughs> i think his personality is great on the show but he's such a strong personality uh, and, and we've talked about it before. Anytime, anytime you come into this space, there's so many personalities in general. You almost can't have somebody that's too overtly dominant because they, they just sort of stick out and you focus on them. But of course I love him. Of course I love his personality. I love him being on the show, what he brings to the show, a different vibe, uh, a talented guy. One of the most talented people on the microphone for like that, that pro wrestling sort of attitude. Uh, but I, I think him him being a loud, boisterous person on the show <laughs> did had the opposite effect on Ken. Ken barely spoke at all. Yeah. On this episode, he had to take a walk and. What was that about? <laughs> I don't know. I'm worried about it. Like even more so. We've talked about his health before, he, he but probably, feel, he probably just had a two hour meeting at Collider. What is going on? That like I've never seen that. Well, I mean, I haven't been watching the show for long enough. But for somebody to just be like, I had to go take a walk. I maybe had to get he some just air. maybe he ate too much at Wood Ranch. Maybe it was a real heavy meal, heavy dinner. And sometimes you just, when you eat too much, you just feel out of it. You know what he did was he picked up Campia's citrus siesta by mistake, and it made him sick. It made him sick to his stomach. It was like drinking Ipcac or whatever that stuff is. It makes you throw up. I meant to uh, I meant to talk about, well, I'll bring it up in Birth to the Future. Um, this dream director thing, this was great. It was great, but they... To continue the come theme, they blew their load because Riley's, Riley's got me so fire. hyped. That was great, and I I love this because I have been pitching my dream scenario for a very very long time. Remind me, what's yours? Peter you're- Berg rebooting the X Men franchise as a as a high school drama TV show, a la. Friday Night Lights. I thought that I was gonna say, was that a TV show or a movie? Well, it was a TV show, but I'm, right. I'm more You're in the using TV it space. here. It's it's the better it's the better medium. We all know that. Uh, I'm only bringing this up because uh, Brett Sheridan brought up uh, Robert Rodriguez. His was great, yeah. And it reminded me of my own personal, which I will share now, because Robert Rodriguez. Last time I checked, and I actually think this is in development hell. I don't think this movie is going anywhere anymore. Thank God. Robert Rodriguez was supposed to direct Johnny Quest. Yes, we've yes we've talked about this. So my choice is Johnny Quest movie, but directed by me. <laughs> I don't think I don't think you really actually want this movie. I think you wanted this movie to happen a while ago, but now you're, you're no, clinging I, to it. I I want Johnny Quest to happen. Okay, and I think about that script that I wrote quite often actually because I loved it. Peter Berg. You want Peter Berg X-Men. to direct Johnny Quest? No, X Men. I wouldn't. I would be fine drama. if Peter Berg directed Johnny Quest. Actually, Peter Berg is in the movie Heavyweights. Decide I'm glad. That. So random. Okay, we're talking about movies. Sorry, Christian. You know what? Christian's out there throwing ball with his other kids, so we can do whatever we want. Brett to the future. Talking about children of men. It is hot in this room. Well, I'm not going to turn my fan on because it'll interfere with the mic. It's on right now. I meant at a higher. Okay, I meant higher. So. Open Bright to the Future with the quote, well, you know I'm not going to get right into it, which was perfect. <laughs> um, him Wait, screaming... I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Him screaming at mid-review, put on your shoes. Oh, my God. I was cracking Incredible. up. Oh, my God. It He's was a so genius. Funny. It was so funny. He's a savant. Um, how, do you, how do you feel about Bright to the Future so late in the show? I, th- I thought it kept it interesting. Really? Yes. I don't care for it. Why? I mean, you start. It's my favorite it. segment. Think about it. You start, start off start to sh- get sleepy. You think about it. You start off with the news, and then you have like the housekeeping, the opening discussion, blah blah blah, and then you introduce uh, Jay Washington and this uh, feud between Makuga and Brett, and then you have this director conversation, and then Brett to the future. I mean, that is talk about peak after peak after peak. I mean, there there wasn't a lull in that entire show. That was a great episode. I'm just saying, Brett to the Future, I mean, I thought it was perfect. I thought it was a beautifully done episode, Cobster. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah. What was this, wrong with Cobster? Did you see his hair? Yeah, I don't know. His hair was messed up. 
What's yeah. wrong with you, man? It's it's wearing those headphones. And... Too much Slipknot. Cobster, if you listen to this, what's your favorite Slipknot album? Well, there's only one answer to that. Which one? Um, three. No. Part, part three. <sighs> That's my least favorite. The one with all the hits. It's the first. It's, oh God forbid you you God forbid you like the one with all the hits. It's the first one. Is the best one, and then Iowa is number two. This is in sight and sound. Um, Jay Washington absolutely destroyed the name of Chuatel at Four. He was trying to correct Brett and said something that was so ridiculous and so not the case. It blew my mind. Um, Brett was fucking nuts during this review, and oh, I, I loved it. Um, and anyway, what I was going to bring up during this segment is uh, I learned that we have a lovely uh, listener. Not only does Christian Harloff listen to these episodes. You know who else listens to these episodes? Who's that? Brett's mother. Oh, yes. We did find that out. I completely yes. forgot. Not only did we find that out, we got confirmation from the man himself. That's right. And um, I want to say thank you for listening. Thank you so much. We think you're lovely. And uh, hopefully we don't upset you too much by talking about your son. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully hopefully you're you're enjoying uh, what, what we're doing here. No. We appreciate it. Um, we're running long. So wh- what did you have on uh, Brits of the Future? Um, I have my own thoughts on children of men in general, but I actually thought he did a good job. It was a pretty honest take of the film. One of the most Brett things that he could have said was that he cared more about things happening off camera more than on camera because <laughs> he's such like an ADD individual when he does these reviews that literally while he was watching the movie, he was getting ADD because when the camera would wonder, he'd be like, Oh, what's that over there? <laughs> and that was great. Uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. He had a, a really good take. Can we talk about the random thing about him going off and talking about, this movie, Children of Men, Pink Floyd, and Animal Farm in the middle of this, which was a little slice of, of legitimate brilliance. Like, did Chris Hartwell take over his body while he was doing this segment? It was great. I never, I mean, I, I could just be an idiot. I'm not, obs- I, look, I'm not obsessed with Children of Men. It's a great movie. Alfonso Cuaron is the tits. I agree. I'm going to keep it there. There's been a lot of hot takes. Anyways, regardless. Alfonso Cuaron directing a Batman movie. There's my director's choice. Anyways. Um, well, I lost my train of thought now. So it okay, doesn't matter. Um, Chris Hartwell. God forbid we go without mentioning him. Well, all I'll say is, for one, he, he brought it again. I am so glad to hear his take on Iron Man 3 because I'm an Iron Man 3 defender myself. Never seen it. So anyway, thank you for that, and I can't wait to see uh, your new episode. Um, it, only- it's it's only a matter of it's only a matter of months, I think, before he becomes full time at Collider. Oh, you I think mean, so? Oh, a hundred percent. There's somebody. I think he has another J. I think he has a day job. Well, somebody can't be that talented. I mean, when I say I think he's one of the smartest, if not the smartest person to ever appear on a Collider program. I'm. I mean it. He speaks in college essays. Should I be afraid that he's going to take my position oh, at Collider? A hundred percent. I think. You know, John Roca. He's been trying to go full time forever. This guy might be gunning for you. You want all the belts? He's going to take the job. I mean, I'm just saying right now. Huh, now I'm a little worried. He is unbelievable, and he dresses fantastic. Oh, he's sharp. Good looking guy. All I'll say about Chris Hartwell is that people were shitting on our leftovers recap this past week and w- people wanted like this nuanced uh essayist type uh reaction to the yeah. leftovers and chris if you're listening i just want to let you know that i told those people who were shitting on us to just go listen to you because you are exactly what these people wanted and they thanked us so they enjoyed what you had and god forbid so people go. disagree yeah jesus christ take it easy okay um Brett was fucking nuts was my second to last note. And then we got into the whole back to school segment. And my only note after that was why was Jeremy not utilized or as Christian calls him Jeremy? Yeah. Uh, that was strange. What was he doing in the clutter office that late? No one knows. We'll never know, but I, I gave my theory. I've always 
since we've been doing this show, I've been waiting for the day for Jeremy Johns to be on the show because one time before we did this, I watched Collider, or I'm sorry, I watched Schmoes Know while Jeremy Johns was on it, and it was one of the funnest times I've ever had. Not because not because I'm like this huge fan of Jeremy, I think he's fine, but the faces he was making, he was having conver- oh. he was having conversations with himself in his own mind. But he he was making like these facial expressions. That was the episode when he was on with Stuckman. Oh my! And whenever God. whenever someone else was talking, you and I were playing this game where we just kept our eyes on Jeremy, and he looked like he was strung out on coke. It was it was, it was crazy. Awesome. <laughs> and I was hoping to God he was going to be on there so that we could talk about it. I mean, if you go back on the Star Wars celebration, I was it might have been. I don't think it was Jedi Council. It might have been the schmodown that they did there and i was looking for it there and i couldn't tell but it was great and i cannot wait i cannot wait to make snapchat videos and string together an edited version of the episode that's just his crazy faces i will do it <laughs> oh i believe you um i can believe that we're we're running long and i feel like we're giving rb3 <laughs> segment the short end of the deal do you have anything to say about this uh, USC uh, final? Uh, I do think his the doorbell ring. I do think uh, his segment in general was was good. Yeah, I agree with something that somebody else said on the show. The fact that uh, a lot of these college classes now, like, where are they coming up with some of this stuff? I never really had like most of the things he said sounded like electives to me, which you'd never want to take your electives too early. Because if you do, you won't have exciting classes to take towards the end. But, uh, yeah, some of them sound really cool. I love RB3. Congratulations on finishing your sophomore semester. Um, some of the rap and hip-hop stuff that he was going into, I just got so scared. I do not want to hear anybody on this show talk about modern music. I just don't. I just don't want to hear it. You're being douchey? I know I am. You're being I, douchey. I agree. But why the hell? That that's not true. You like Copster. You like how he's a metalhead. I would love Copster to discuss metal music. You've asked that. RB3 to come on Sight and Sound. RB3, even though you've never followed through RB3, on it. RB3, absolutely. I, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. A lot of the people. <laughs> a lot of the people. We can only talk about Van Halen for so long. That's great. I don't know what type of music Ken listens to. Ellis is living in the past, isn't he, Jay? He is. I've and I like to look forward. Um, I feel like Ken is like a Gin Blossoms fan. Maybe a maybe a Matchbox Twenty or a, who's somebody else that he would be a big fan of. Maybe uh, the. What's that guy? The Blues Travelers? I don't know why. He likes the Beatles. Him and Scott Mance. Well, who doesn't like the Beatles? That's like saying you like Cheerios. Okay. That was in my uh, cereal, Mount Rushmore. I know it was. Okay. Well, I think we... It's We've about gone off the rails. It's about spent here. Um, I don't so know if it's... in this room. We, have the, we had long segments. We were weird. We were weird. I don't know if it's my room. Maybe we should record every episode back at your house. Uh, this was such a strange episode. My goodness! Shout out to uh, to Wiley Todd who on pre on Prishmo said, "Where are your dogs?" <laughs> <laughs> I told him I maybe that's what it was. There were no dogs to keep us in line. I told him I locked him out. The first episode, Cal hasn't sucked the energy from the room. That's true. Cal was great. Um, what I do want to say is this show is only this weird because the guys over there let us be weird. Oh, absolutely. Um, on another podcast, again, I was on Corey Knott's podcast this past week. Um, a lot of you know him. I was a guest on it, and I told him, I said, when since Jay and I have started doing After Schmo, I don't think we have received a single note from those guys. And not, th- not that we they... We did get notes on our trial episode when they didn't know how we were going to do from Christian and Ken. But since then, right. that was it. And it wasn't like it wasn't them telling us what to do. It was just their opinion on how we handled the show. Yeah. yeah, but they they let us be weird and they let the show be whatever it is, and we we appreciate that so much. We think it's cool, and uh, we love that we have the fans that we do, and that they embrace um, they embrace us. An and incredible I, incredible fan community. I mean, 
there's a fan community and then there's this diehard section of, of fans that get into yeah. every pre schmo that respond to every poll we post on site and sound weekly. The ones that comment on all of our videos. I mean, you guys know who you are and we love you so much. It, it's, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, we, we couldn't ask for it anymore. Do you think Mark is going to listen every single week? Cause that's something new. 100% not. We got no. we got that that tweet that he was going to listen to us and then uh, and then Roka's podcast Outlaw Nation. There's no way that Ellis listens every week, and I don't expect him to, and that's okay. You don't think he's that's like a new thing? He he woke up one day, he's like, you know what? I'm I'm the head of the show. Christian's off playing with his other kids, and I need <laughs> to I need to listen. No. Okay. And it's okay. Um, but anyway, we love you guys so much. Uh, we mentioned Sight and Sound. We just launched our Sight and Sound t-shirt. So I know you hear us talk about Sight and Sound. You might hear us talking about something else. But, like, we we are Sight and Sound. So if you <laughs> support that, you're you're also supporting After Smoke because the bigger Sight and Sound gets, the bigger that After Smoke can get. We have, we have plans for it. Um, so they're kind of they're symbiotic in a way. I, I guess that video a, is on the horizon. We yes. can see video, and we're probably going to do video from time to time. But in order to make it consistent, like an every single week thing, we you know we need your help. We need your you guys to get out there and buy some shirts. Right, that would so, be fantastic. So the reason why we mentioned sight and sound is because there's an osmosis between those two things. So one thing affects the other. So we would greatly appreciate the support. Please uh, check out our brand new T-shirts. Uh, we have our regular like default shirts that will always be there. But Jay is also putting out uh, one uh, monthly, like an exclusive for that month. So that's another reason why you need to keep checking in on those shirts. I have one inspired by the cat. What's that cat's name? From last episode, or from oh the, Swayze? Yeah, we. I also don't have a history lesson this week. I just it was too busy. Well, I was gonna skip over. Okay, regardless. Yeah, um, so there's there's a shirt coming soon, maybe the next one. I'm not sure that is inspired by Swayze the cat scaring Christian Harloff. That's amazing. Um, so you can find our T Public store by going to sightsoundpod.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com/slash c/slash sightsoundpod. And subscribe to our podcast. That's it. Jay Williams, where can they find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jay Williams, J to the A to the Y to the E. It's the same for both every single Friday on the Sight and Sound podcast feed and our YouTube channel, giving you some music knowledge. That's the place where you want to go to hear about music. Sight and Sound, Sight and Sound music every he, Friday. He's not wrong. Guys, I've kept you long enough. You can find me on twitter at what up snail my instagram is also at what up snail i changed it so there's less confusion and i'm picking up i'm doing instagram more so please follow me on instagram as well again at what up snail and uh i've done all my uh, plugs i greatly appreciate you all we'll see you next week bye bye